Funding for this program was provided in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the financial support of viewers like you. Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. Shocking, simply shocking, dreadful behavior, scandalous. Sometimes I think I should give up reading the comics altogether. And then he folds it again, like this. There. I'm a pilot. Ahoy, shipmate. <laughs> oh, hello. Where are you going today? Moose. Sea. Leap. Lucy's leap. No smoking. Lucy's leap. No smoking. Have a good trip. Bye. <laughs> okay, where were we? Let's okay. see. Doodle Haven, uh, 350. Three, no, 315. 315. Doodle Haven, 315. Oh dear. Good thing we checked. Yeah. And our passengers expect this information to be accurate. Right. Okay. Maybe we should double check everything. What do you have for Foggy? 11 o'clock? Uh, 11 o'clock, Foggy, they'll check. Hey, Mr. Scoop. Hi, Mr. Scoop. Uh, now, is that Carol with a C or with a K? Hey, I remember you. You're a newspaper writer. Uh, not just a writer, Sonny, a reporter with the Indian Valley Gazette. Wait a minute. Hmm? That's my byline. Hey, uh, uh, my name on a piece I wrote just last week. Mayor of East Shemp seeks re-election. <laughs> Believe you me, that was not an easy story to get. So you wrote this? And they printed it? And everybody read it? Wow. Yeah, you know, it's a rough job, but someone's got to do it. Miss Smoot, great to see you. Mr. Scoop, hello. What are you doing here? Are you covering a story? Oh, I hope there's nothing wrong, like trains arriving late or missing tickets. Oh, no, of course not, ma'am. All news is not bad news, you know. But uh, speaking of news, what's new? Well, Mr. Scoop, you know how I hate gossip. <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am, I surely do. But I have to tell someone. Oh, of course, of course. It's about Jimmy. You know, from Farmer's Dell. Mm-hmm. Must be so neat working for a newspaper. Hey, why don't we start our own newspaper? Like... The Becky Caradan News. No, no, better. The Shining Time Times. And write on stationery. Or the Shining Times, that's it. Yeah. Awesome. Excuse me, would you mind lending me a bounce? Sure, Mr. Conductor. What do you need? I've been trying to repair the signal arm. It's broken. It's all bent. Trains depend on signals, and they have to be absolutely correct at all times. So I was wondering... Here, let me try. Okay, um... Everybody, okay? Yeah. Okay, one, two, three... Oh, Here. thanks a lot. I'm glad you fixed it. Percy's been having enough trouble with signals as it is. Really? What happened? Oh, it's quite a story. Why don't I tell you about it? Percy works in the yard at the big station. He loves playing jokes, but they can get him into trouble. One morning, he was very cheeky indeed. Hurry up, Gordon. The train's ready. Gordon thought he was late. Ha, 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 laughed Percy and showed him a train of dirty coal cars. Gordon thought how to get back at Percy for teasing him. 
Next, it was James's turn. Stay in the shed today, James. Sir Topham Hatt will come and see you. Ah, thought James. Sir Topham Hatt knows I'm a fine engine. He wants me to pull a special train. James's driver and fireman could not make him move. The other engines grumbled dreadfully. They had to do James's work as well as their own. At last, the inspector arrived. Show a wheel, James. You can't stay here all day. Sir Topham Hatt told me to stay here. He sent a message this morning. He did not. How could he? He's away for a week. Oh, said James. Oh, where's Percy? Percy had wisely disappeared. When Sir Topham Hatt came back, he was cross with James and Percy for causing so much trouble. But the very next day, Percy was still being cheeky. I say, you engines, I'm to take some freight cars to Thomas's junction. Sir Topham Hatt chose me especially. He must know I'm a really useful engine. More likely, he wants you out of the way, grunted James. Gordon looked across to James. They were going to play a trick on Percy. James and I were just speaking about signals at the junction. We can't be too careful about signals, but then I needn't say that to a really useful engine like you, Percy. Percy felt flattered. We had spoken of backing signals, put in James. They need extra special care, you know. Would you like me to explain? No, thank you, James, said Percy. I know all about signals. Percy was a little worried. I wonder what backing signals are, he thought. Never mind, I'll manage. He puffed crossly to his freight cars and felt better. came to a signal. Bother! It's a danger. The signal moved to show line clear. Its arm moved up instead of down. Percy had never seen that sort of signal before. Down means go, and up means stop. So upper still must mean go back. I know. It's one of those backing signals. Come on, Percy, said his driver. Off we go. Stop! You're going the wrong way. But it's a backing signal, Percy protested and told him about Gordon and James. The driver laughed and explained. Oh, dear, said Percy. Let's start quickly before they see us. He was too late. Gordon saw everything. That night, the big engines talked about signals. They thought the subject was funny. Percy thought they were being very silly. So you see, Percy's problem wasn't that he made up stories. That's fine. What he did wrong was to make people believe that his made up stories were true. I think Percy should be more careful. Yes, I'm sure he will be. Thank you again for repairing the signal arm. Well, what are we waiting for? We've got a newspaper to put out. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes, I suppose you could say that mine is a typical modern success story. Uh, I attribute it to hard work, dashing good looks, and an exceptionally keen business mind, uh, which I inherited from my mommy. From his mommy. Anything else? About my mommy? Well, she's smart, she's honest, and she has an exceptionally talented son. Can you hold this down? That's Lakota, spelled L-A-K-O-T-A. -A. Lakota Sioux. Were they a very big tribe? Nation, Dan. We're called nations, and we're a very great people. As a matter of fact, Sitting Bull was a chief of the Standing Rock Sioux. Really? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. 
So, what do you want to ask me? Um, how's the mayor? Mayor? Well, he's fine, I suppose. Do you like him? Well, I voted for him. Yes, I like him. Thanks! You know, I think your readers might be interested in the history of Shining Time Station, Kara. Did you know that my grandmother, Gracie Jones, was the first station manager here? And boy, did she have stories to tell. Oh, let's see. My favorite story was uh, one me. winter. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, Miss Jones. Uh, Kara, I thought that uh, perhaps you could use a picture of me for the big story that you're doing about me for your newspaper. Here's my front, here's my back. Yeah, oh. Okay, Alyssa, maybe I should uh, autograph this for you as well. Now, uh, my name is spelled S-C-H-E-M-E-R. Emphasis on the scheme. There you go. Yeah. OK, well, where was I? Your grandmother in the winter. Oh, right. Oh, this story. I love this story. Oh, the press. Huh? Well, I have a train to catch, so you'll have to make it snap, snap, snappy. Yes, sir. Do you like Miss Smoot? Miss who? Miss Smoot. Oh, oh, Miss Smoot, certainly. Oh, a lovely lady. I like everyone who voted for me. Thanks. Wait a minute. Don't you want to hear about my new garbage dump? So here they are, all our stories. And you know what? What? They're kind of, well, boring. No one's gonna want to read them. I've got... Mayor likes Midge Smoot, and she likes him. So what? How about Mayor and Midge Smoot in love? No, no, better. Midge Smoot will marry Mayor. But they didn't say that. Okay, okay. Midge Smoot might marry Mayor, but he doesn't want to. That's better. What about Schema? He said he likes his mommy. I'll change a word or two. Schema's mad at his mommy. Yeah. <laughs> I bet Stacy's grandmother wouldn't like Schema. Yeah. Maybe Stacy doesn't like Schema. Yeah. Maybe she wants to kick him out. Yeah. Stacy says Schema must get out, or else. <laughs> Billy say he was related to Chief Sitting Bull? Well, he said they were both Sue. Billy Two Feathers, grandson of Chief Sitting Bull. You think they'll like it? Sure they will. I feel like shouting newspaper. Let's play something on the jukebox to celebrate our new paper. Good idea. It's on me. <laughs> They're telling stories. Why don't we tell one ourselves? Well, the only stories we know are songs. You tell them, Tex. I just did, Rex. I knew I heard it someplace. How about a song about a railroad? I got it. I got it. How about Tennessee Central Number, number nine. nine? Yeah. One, eight, two.
I want you to know, Mayor Flopdinger, that I wouldn't marry you if you were the last mayor on Earth. My dear woman, I can assure you, I was misquoted. <gasps> oh, my word. Mrs. Flopdinger will never speak to me again. Sure. Blame it on the press. Isn't that what you politicians always do? Oh, my dear madam. Oh, my dear Miss Smoot. <gasps> my, my dear, my dear voter. Schemer, I never, ever said that I wanted to kick you out of the station. Oh, no? No. Then how come it says it right here in black and white? If it's in print, Miss Jones, it must be true. Really? Okay, then it must be true that you are very mad at your mommy. I love my mommy. Well, it says it right here. If my mommy reads that, she'll... Mommy, I didn't write that! I didn't write it! Mommy, it's not true! It's true. Dan, you better talk to Stacy. Kara, let's go see Billy. He's gonna be really angry at all of us. This is some creative writing you've got here, Dan. <laughs> hmm, let's see. Romance in bloom, family quarrels, famous Indian chiefs. We just didn't want our stories to be well, boring. Oh, well, I guess you were successful then, I suppose. Aunt Stacy, hmm. what's wrong with creative writing? I thought creative was good. Well, there's a big difference, though, Dan, between making a story up, which is creative writing, and reporting a story. I'll show you what I mean. Remember when we all went to the movies the other night? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to report on that night, all right? I'm going to write a report. You help me. Let's see. All right. It all began on a dark and stormy night. It wasn't stormy. It wasn't even dark when it began. Oh, all right. The sun was setting. That's better. Okay. Uh, we drove to the theater, okay, and suddenly we were surrounded by big machines roaring and snarling in the darkness. Other people's cars. True. Okay, cars. Now the gates were swung wide, all right, and we were admitted by a cruel and sinister servant to the castle. Uh, that was the ticket taker. Okay. There, cowering in the darkness, we were offered strange and exotic foods and beverages by unseen voices. So I'm starting to get scared. Oh, sorry, Dad. Okay, let's go home. That was a real story. Yes, but it wasn't the real story, was it? It wasn't the real report, huh? Okay, I see what you mean. Good. Grandson of Sitting Bull, huh? Now, who told you that? I never said a thing like that. Well, you said you were related to him, didn't you? What I said was, my ancestors are Sioux, and I'm very proud of that fact. But you don't have to be related to somebody famous in order to be proud of your heritage. Billy, does this mean you don't like me anymore? Does this mean I can't grow up to be an engineer like you? Kara, Becky, it's okay. It's just a mistake, and we all make them. But let's get one thing clear. I am not the grandson of Sitting Bull, even if I did read it in this paper. But you'll have to excuse me, kids. And Mr. Conductor, I have to go and check the signal light. Hi, Kara. Hi, Dan. Oh, hi, Mr. Conductor. Boy, are we in a lot of trouble. What are we going to do? Don't be worried, Dan. I'm sure things will be all right. I'm sorry you weren't here to listen to what my friend Billy Two Feathers just told Becky and Kara. About what? About mistakes and how they're all right as long as you learn something from them. Back on the island of Sodor, Thomas just found that out for himself. How? Well, I'll tell you. Thomas the tank engine was grumbling to the other engines. I spend my time pulling coaches about, ready for you to take out on journeys. The other engines laughed. Why can't I pull passenger trains too? You're too impatient, they said. You'd be sure to leave something behind. 
Rubbish, said Thomas. I'll show you. One night, he and Henry were alone. Henry was ill. The men worked hard, but he didn't get better. He felt just as bad next morning. Henry usually pulled the first train, and Thomas had to get his coaches ready. If Henry is ill, he thought, perhaps I shall pull his train. Thomas ran to find the coaches. Come along, come along, he fussed. There's plenty of time, there's plenty of time, they grumbled. Thomas took them to the platform and wanted to run round in front at once. But his driver wouldn't let him. Don't be impatient, Thomas. Thomas waited and waited. The people got in. The conductor and station master walked up and down. The porter banged the doors, and still Henry didn't come. Thomas got more and more excited. Sir Topham Hatt came to see what was the matter, and the conductor and station master told him about Henry. Find another engine, he ordered. There's only Thomas, they said. You'll have to do it then, Thomas. Be quick now. So Thomas ran round to the front and back down on the coaches, ready to start. Let's not be impatient, said his driver. We'll wait till everything is ready. But Thomas was too excited to listen. What happened then, no one knows. Perhaps they forgot to couple Thomas to the train, or perhaps the driver pulled the lever by mistake. Anyhow, Thomas started without his coaches. As he passed the first signal tower, men waved and shouted, but he didn't stop. They're waving because I'm such a splendid engine, he thought importantly. Henry says it's hard to pull trains, but I think it's easy. Hurry, 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 he puffed, pretending to be like Gordon. People have never seen me pulling a train before. It's nice of them to wave. And he whistled. Beep, beep. Thank you. Then he came to a signal at danger. Bother, he thought. I must stop. And I was going so nicely, too. What a nuisance signals are. He blew an angry beep, beep on his whistle. The signalman ran up. Hello, Thomas, he said. What are you doing here? I'm pulling a train, said Thomas. Can't you see? Where are your coaches, then? Thomas looked back. Why, bless me, he said, if we haven't left them behind. Yes, said the signalman. You'd better go back quickly and fetch them. Poor Thomas was so sad, he nearly cried. Cheer up, said his driver. Let's go back quickly and try again. station, all the passengers were talking at once. They were telling Sir Topham Hatt what a bad railway it was. But when Thomas came back, they saw how sad he was and couldn't be cross. He was coupled to the train, and this time he really pulled it. Afterwards, the other engines laughed at Thomas and said, Look, there's Thomas, who wanted to pull a train, but forgot about the coaches. But Thomas had already learned not to make the same mistake again. People will understand if you make a mistake. The idea is not to make a mistake and then make the same mistake all over again. Biggest mistake of all is not to learn from your mistakes. Otherwise, you'll find yourselves quite mistaken. <laughs> so anyway, there I am running home, right? I just about get to the front door when I realize, hey, my mommy is in Doodlehaven visiting one of her friends. She isn't even going to see the newspaper. So what am I worried about? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh, got to go, kids. Oh, hi, Schemer. Sorry about what we wrote about your mother. Yeah, I was, uh... Just talking to her right now on the phone, and whew, she took it pretty hard, poor woman. But, uh, well, there is a way you could make it up to her. How? 
by being extra nice to me. Anybody got a nickel? Who wrote this? This, this Shining Times? This disgrace to journalism? Who's responsible for this? That's what I want to know. Uh, they are. The three of them, right there. All right, well, listen up, kids. And listen good. This is not reporting. Now, if you want to be in the newspaper game, you got to learn to get your facts straight, and you got to double-check your facts before you go to press. We know that now, Mr. Scoop. We know there's a big difference between telling a real story and telling a made-up story. Yeah. And we know it's okay to make mistakes if you learn from your mistakes. Yeah. Well, maybe. Uh, I wouldn't know, you know. I never get my stories wrong. Never? In my reporting? Never. Scoop! Where's this scoop? I'm looking for this nincompoop scoop. Uh, Mr. Mayor, here I am, Your Honor. Are you the author of this journalistic gobbledygook? Oh, the story on your campaign speech. Yes, sir, I wrote that. Well, go ahead, read it. No, read it right now, right there. Uh, His Honor said that he was here tonight to talk garbage. Well, that isn't what I said. I said I was there to talk about garbage, trash collections, clean streets, recycling. Oh, sorry. Sorry? Well, what are you going to do about it? We'll print a retraction in tomorrow's paper. No problem. What's a retraction? Well, it's uh, when a newspaper makes a mistake. Uh, yes, yes, it happens sometimes. Uh, we print a piece as soon as possible saying that we were wrong and we apologize. You know, Your Honor, it's okay to make mistakes if you learn from your mistakes. Did, didn't you say that once in, in a speech? No, but I will now. Come on, let's get busy. Hmm? With what? With our special retraction issue of the Shining Time. Good idea. And this time, let's put in a lot of comics. Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true. Waiting there for you So much to see So far to travel So much to learn to know Friends by your side Hopes to hold on to Who knows how far you'll go To a shining time station Where dreams can come true Your own imagination Waiting there for you. Funding for this program was provided in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the financial support of viewers like you. This is PBS.